downtown Riverside, right next to the Mission Inn at the Riverside Art Museum. And I'm here with Drew. Drew, tell us a little bit about the museum. Sure, the museum has been around since the 1950s. It started as an art center where people could come and take arts classes. And in the 60s, a group of people envisioned turning our building, which was designed by Julia Morgan, California's first professional female architect, was used as a YWCA into an art museum. So today, it is only one of two of her YWCA's, Julia Morgan's, that are still like functioning properly, which sure. is fantastic. So we're very indebted to the group of people in the 60s who envisioned this as a museum. Uh, on the outside of the building, I, I saw something that said uh, 1929. Yes, and that was the year that this was built in okay. 1929. So Julie Morgan was here and working. And again, it was a big community effort to fundraise to um, get her here and to build this. And it was something that the women of the community really, really wanted because she had been designing YWCAs through, throughout California. Now, was that the initial intent of the building back in yes, 1929? It, yes, wow. it was a YWCA. So at the time, you know, women were coming from the country and they wanted to create a life in the city. Yeah. So they would live here and um, it was a safe place. There was bedrooms, but there was also recreational activities so they could make friends and really build a life for them in, the, in these new cities. The Riverside Art Museum throughout the years, we've um, done a lot with the community. And this is a very special sculpture for us, um, the ART. It was fabricated by a local artist named Louis Tozier. And um, then it was painted by um, another local artist named Halden Evans with the help of some students who've gotten in trouble with graffiti. Some, um, oh, wow. Yeah, and so it was part of an effort to just bring them here to the museum to encourage their talents, but encourage them sort of the right direction. How long will you keep a piece like this out in front of the museum? You know, it really depends. Um, we do sculptures, we rotate sculptures um, every couple of months or so. So we um, definitely encourage people to keep coming by and driving by to see what sort of new fun sculpture we have outside. So, so don't be too disappointed if you drive by at one point <laughs> and it's not here anymore. <laughs> yes. uh, that is cool. So, Let's go in and sure. explore. Great. The lobby area of Julia Morgan's uh, building. So there was once a couch here um, where the young women could come and have visitors and such. Now um, it is a space where oftentimes we exhibit a design. We have our gift shop right over here to the left where we um, stock you know, museum quality design items in our gift shop. We have our front desk. Um, we also have our lovely atrium space that we use for arts education classes. We also do a lot of facility rentals. You can have your wedding here, um, a special birthday party in this great space. This is our Art Alliance Gallery, but at one time it was a pool. And you're actually standing inside the pool. Oh. Um, I raise it. I don't have floaties on. Um, an artist, Matthew Tyson, um, he's a, print a British printmaker who lives and works in Paris, or rather in France, um, came here and did an exhibition and he was really intrigued with the idea that this used to be a pool and they literally just filled it in with dirt and so he's demarcated the space here of where the pool used to be and so he found some great old photographs from our archives of um, the, the folks oh. using the pool. And um, I understand that Riverside Poly, um, their gym class used to swim here as well. So these are some fabulous wow. old photographs. That is fantastic. W when was the pool done away with? Um, when it was converted to the art museum. So that was the 60s. 60s. Matthew um, created new pieces, which are um, right over here on the wall in response to um, his residency here in Riverside and um, from our permanent collection. Um, and so we have some of his artist books on display as well as some of his contemporary pieces. Now, and, and again, how often will you change out pieces here in the gallery? You know, um, we rotate exhibitions seasonally. So Matthew Tyson's a printmaker and a bookmaker, so he's very interested in um, paper-based art mediums. And this was done in response to the environment here in Riverside. So um, one of his new pieces that he commissioned is inspired by Mount Rubidoux. Another one is it's, it's very exciting and interesting for us to be able to showcase work that um, is a ref an artist's reflection of, of what it's like to be here and to create. Sure. So, sure. Part of, important part of our mission. How does it work? Does an artist end up 
occupying the entire gallery? You know, it really depends. Um, if artists are interested in doing an exhibition here, there's um, information on our website, www.riversideartmuseum.org, mm -hmm. and they can download um, an exhibition or an artist proposal. I love the way this room is set up. This is so unique. Yeah, this is a very special exhibition for us. Douglas McCullough is a renowned photographer, and he did these large-scale prints on fabric. And um, how they're installed is really reflective of sort of the intersection of our community and how so many people come through our lives. And their stories may, you know, one person may appear in one story, and then they may appear in another story again. So this is the, the stories of Riverside's East Side community. And Susan Strait, who is a professor at UCR um, and, and had grown up on the East Side, knew a lot of these stories and wanted to tell them. And so with each of the photographs is an essay about someone's story. So people can call in on their cell phones and hear Susan reading the story to them. No. So let me show you one of my favorites. Wow. Oh, that, is this something that's common in the art world? You know, this is something that's, um, that happens sometimes. It's one of the first that we're doing here at the museum. So this is Tracing the Ashes, Ringing the Bells, the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe. So I can call this the number and put um, you know, the code in and hear Susan read these stories. Um, I just wanted to show you something really fast I think you'll love. Tony and Sarah Lopez are photographed right here. And um, this is them today in front of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and this is them 74 years ago on their wedding, um, on their wedding day. Um, it was so neat to have both of them here during the opening reception and to talk with their family members and other people of the community about what it was like to build a life and build a family here in Riverside. How often are you open? Who can actually come out here? We invite everyone to come. Um, we're open Tuesday through Sunday, Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 4.30, and Sundays from noon to 4. Um, we participate in the citywide annual Arts Walk yeah. the first Thursday of every month, and it's always free. We always have something fun, from music to free arts programming. We also participate in the first Sundays program during the school year. And again, we invite families to come and just um, take advantage of the free art programming that we have here. So we're in the atrium, which is beautiful. I'm here with Beth, and I understand you do the classes here. I do. So I what, do. what kind of classes do you do? Well, every Saturday uh, we've got a different class, usually based on a theme. And then um, during the week we've got week-long classes for kids, especially in the summertime. And then we have a, a teen program. Teen program kind of it steps up a notch, um, it's more standards-based art skills, drawing, painting, mixed media, kind of things like that. Oh, cool. And then also we have an adult program, full adult studios. Wow. That all of these classes go year round. This is kind of fun. Thank you, Beth. Art classes here in Riverside in the beautiful Riverside Art Museum. Obviously a very unique place here in the Inland Empire. Cool.